If you guys want one-on-one -on -one training, online training, or nutritional coaching, please head on over to my website, jpfitnesspro.com. Just go to the services tab and select which one you would like. You can also subscribe to my newsletter and contact me through my website as well. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell so you never miss a video. Thanks. What is up everybody? This is JP here and I'm coming at you with another episode of the Minimalist series and today we're going to cover shoulders. But first things first, I'm going to give you guys the one random fact about me and that fact is that my favorite food is pizza. Ever since I went vegan, I haven't been able to find a good uh, pizza place, but I have found one over the weekend. I'm going to figure out the name of that place and put it in the info section below. This isn't a sponsorship or anything. I just want to give them a shout out because again, um, if you're vegan and you're looking for uh, a good pizza place, this is something that you're able to try. Um, it's in the Inland Empire in California. Again, I can't remember exactly where I was at. We, I just drove there and then I went, but uh, I will figure that out and I'll put that down below. Let me know what your guys' favorite food is so I can get to know you guys a little bit better. Um, like I said, this, uh, this video is going to be the next episode of the Minimalist series and it's going to cover shoulders. The Minimalist series is a video series that gives you the least amount of exercise to cover that muscle group as well as possible. And it's aimed for people who one, don't have a lot of time for working out and two, maybe just don't like working out but they want to get an optimal workout in or as optimal as possible with as little time as possible so the first this is going to be with two exercises for the shoulders just two exercises and if you couldn't tell already the first exercise is going to be a barbell overhead press now the reason why i like a heavy overhead press again it's a it's a compound movement so you're able to overload that muscle group very well and you're kind of getting the most bang for your buck um, if you're going to be using mostly isolation movements, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to overload that muscle group as well. And you're just going to, again, be wasting, not wasting your time in the gym. Again, your goal is to minimize your time in the gym here because this is a minimalist series. So we're trying to get the most bang for our buck and the most return on an investment for our time spent in the gym. So again, a big barbell compound movement or dumbbell compound movement is going to come first. Now, the next thing to address is why I, I'm saying a barbell overhead press instead of a dumbbell overhead press. And there's a couple main reasons. The first is that the reason why we're picking this exercise first is that our goal is to overload the shoulders. Now, if you're using dumbbells, you're not going to be able to practically or practically overload the shoulders without some form of assistance from a friend or some spotter. Think about it. If you're trying to do a dumbbell overhead press, very heavy standing, that's just not practical in any sort of sense. It's gonna be very awkward and, I mean, I don't know anyone who does heavy dumbbell overhead press standing. If you do, I mean, you have, you must have your friends around you all the time to spot you. But again, standing is pretty much a no-go for most people when it comes to heavy dumbbell overhead press. So assuming we're not standing, we're getting a lot of the good benefits about a barbell overhead press or a standing overhead press we're not getting. We're not teaching you how to brace. We're not teaching you to increase stability by bracing very well. It's just taking out one of the biggest points of an overhead press that I personally like. So when you're doing a seated dumbbell overhead press. So if you're doing it seated, you're taking out, again, one of the most important things that I find comes with doing the overhead press. The second thing is, again, you still face the same problems as a standing overhead dumbbell press if you're going heavy. Remember, our goal is to overload here. So if you're going heavy with dumbbells, you're gonna either need someone to lift the dumbbells up for you, which might not always be practical. You might not have someone, or you might just not wanna ask someone to help you every single set that you have to get dumbbells up. Um, especially again, if you're someone who's lifting real heavy weight, anyone who does heavy dumbbell overhead press is going to need someone to help them up. Now, those are just, even when you're seated, that's gonna be a problem. Now, the next thing is that when you're seated, it leaves room for a lot of little errors like for example if you've probably seen someone say oh here's a heavy dumbbell dumbbell overhead press but they're leaning back and basically turning it to an incline uh bench press um that's a lot more easy to do and probably only able to do on a seated variation of overhead press on a standing overhead press you might be able to get away with a little bit of uh thoracic extension but it's not going to be to the point where it's going to turn it into an incline bench press so again, those are the three main reasons, and I'll recap those right now, on why I, don't, I just personally don't prefer a dumbbell overhead press when we're doing a minimalist workout. 
Um, they might be good for someone who's not doing a minimalist workout. Um, and those three things are one, you're, you're probably not going to be able to do a standing, which means you have to do a seated, which means that you're going to be taking the, the stability requirements out of the lift, which I, I like the barbell overhead press for that reason. It requires you to brace, it requires you to get tight. It teaches you one of the most important principles of lifting is getting tight. The second thing is that uh, when you're seated, you're still gonna need spotters, so it's not very practical because you're always gonna have to ask someone if you if you go heavy with the dumbbell overhead press. And the third thing is it's easier to cheat, lean back, turn it into an incline bench press. There's just a lot of things that you can kind of get away with doing it a seated dumbbell overhead press. So for those reasons, I prefer the barbell overhead press. It's a heavy compound movement. It teaches you stability. It gives you a lot of bang for your book. And this is the first exercise of two uh, in this shoulder minimalist series. And the next exercise is going to be right here. So the next exercise in the shoulder minimalist series is, you guessed it, the dumbbell lateral raise. Now, I know that the side delts are going to be recruited heavily during a barbell overhead press still. Um, but I just think that you need that kind of direct direct work on your uh, lateral delts or side delts because you just, again, anyone who's training or who wants to optimize hypertrophy, ask any guy for physique, you want that V taper. Um, so while again, while the barbell overhead press does hit the lateral delts uh, plenty, um, it's going to primarily hit your uh, anterior delts or your front delts. So I still think that it was uh, uh, justified to get a very specific direct work on your uh, lateral delts with a dumbbell lateral raise. So again, the two exercises are going to be a barbell overhead press and a dumbbell lateral raise. This is pretty much going to cover the shoulders for our minimalist workout. I know there wasn't any crazy, fancy, different, unique exercises here, but that's not our goal. Our goal is to have the uh, least amount of exercise and a workout that's going to hit the shoulders uh, in a well-rounded fashion without leaving any gaps or holes. Now, some of you may be saying, well, what happened to the rear delts? Uh, why, why aren't you hitting those? The reason being is, and this has always been my preference, and there's, uh, I have very good reasoning for this, is I always hit the rear delts on back days. When I did my back minimalist uh, uh, video, we had a face pull as one of the exercises. That's going to hit your traps, your rhomboids, um, your external rotators and your rear delts. Any rows or high rows or face pulls or anything, uh, any row in that sort of fashion is going to hit your rear delts. Um, there's going to be too much muscle group crossover if you hit your rear delts on shoulder days and then you have a back day before or after that. You're essentially going to be hitting rear delts two times in a row uh, very hard. So I know that there is still some rear delt recruitment and presses and things like that, but again, I don't think that one, I never program rear delts on shoulder days. I don't, um, that goes on back days. Two, you're gonna get heavy crossover if you do rear delts on a uh, shoulder day and then you're also doing rows, any type of row on a back day, which I'm um, hopefully you're doing some sort of row on a back day. So again, rear delts are for back days and those are already hit on our back minimalist series. If you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.